Hello and welcome to Transurf and Chill on Transurfing TV. This is the show where I'm going to be interviewing Renee Garcia about literally every single concept in reality transurfing and breaking it all down for you. Really excited to be bringing the show to you all. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the queen of transurfing, Renee Garcia. All right, light, love, and namaste. How are yes, you? Exactly. How are you, Renee? Yeah. Oh, I'm doing so well, <laughs> Owen. Yeah, you know, man, I'm just really grateful for everything, all the abundance in my life and <laughs> all the pure souls. and Oh, and yeah, the star seeds, right? Yeah, let's go howl at the moon tonight, Owen. Oh, it's so full tonight. Good. It means oh, so oh, it is. Oh, yeah. Mother Earth. <laughs> Gaia, sweet Gaia. <laughs> yeah. What is Gaia anyway? I see this like Gaia, Gaia. I'm like, what is that? Oh, you know, I, I am not from the new age world, you know, at all. Um, a lot of people come to me and they're like, they're like, oh, have you ever heard the writings of so-and-so? And I'm like, nope. I, I don't know any of this stuff. None of it. I mean, up until 35 years old, my main focus was like money a boyfriend and maintaining my appearance like I didn't I wasn't I wasn't at all on the new age tip like it whatsoever you know so you know now coming into this scene in this capacity that I am right like I've got a little bit of you know notoriety here and people come to me and they're like oh will you like get on board with this or like oh have you heard of this or blah 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 and and I get to see all this stuff for what it really is because I've never I've never bought into anything other than transurfing transurfing is the only thing and I mean I've come across a lot of stuff mm -hmm. but it's always just felt you know fake or you know, something, I don't know, for the lack of finding a better term, sickly. Yeah. You know, I hate to say that, but like every everything I've come across feels kind of like it's it's almost about um you pretending to be somebody you're not, mm -hmm. or you um trying to hinder some part of your personality to fit into a defined mold of like, okay, this is for what this is for people that follow like Gurdjieff's teachings, you know, or or this is for people that follow that like Rumi, or is that is how you pronounce his name, Rumi? I think so. I don't know who Rumi <laughs> is. I know Gurdjieff. Are you yeah, R U M I, that guy, he was, I think he was Persian or something. Anyway, all this stuff, it's just like, to me, that's exactly what it is. It's all just stuff. It's all just noise. And when people come to me and they're like, oh, yeah, transurfing's great, but have you ever heard this? And I'm just like, nope. And I don't care because transurfing's all I need, you know? Yeah. Like, I really, I really do feel, I, and, 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 and I know this is coming from an ignorant place and I will own up to that. I don't know about other concepts. I've read about what they have to offer and nothing ever struck a chord with me like transurfing did when I listened to that first five minutes of audio yeah. i mean if it doesn't have me in five minutes it's out of there i'm not even interested you know so anyway yeah this whole like what we were just laughing about this whole like sickly sweet new age movement it's just a bunch of bullshit it is it's really fake um there's there's definitely some stuff out there that's pretty good like i love robert anton wilson's work i just made a couple of videos on his stuff uh he is like this kind of really smart guy in the 60s uh, and 70s. He picked up on one of Timothy Leary's ideas that he had discovered called the eight circuit model of consciousness. It's like a consciousness map, but they were like into, like he, he even equates like different levels of consciousness with different like substances and chemicals and stuff like that. It's pretty, he's a smart, smart dude. And it's, it's, it's like, he has a sense of humor about it as well. Like they even created yeah. this fake religion called, um, Oh, oh I think I've heard about this. I think I've heard about this. Discordianism. Actually. Yeah. Um, and it's really, it's really funny and, and interesting. Um, yeah. I mean, there's cool stuff. Like I read this book called Human Types. Uh -huh. um, have you heard about that book? Where I haven't. We're, we're all assigned essentially to a planet and there are like six different types of human beings or eight different types of human beings. And each one has their influence 
from one of the planets in our solar system. So like I'm I'm of Mars. So like I'm considered a Marshall, right? And the characteristics of a Marshall are all the characteristics that I have. And the book actually shows like pictures of people. And this is what a Marshall looks like. Broad shoulders, you know, a narrow body, um, uh, bigger feet, whatever. Like there's all these characteristics. And then there's the personality characteristics and how they relate to others and how they relate to their environment. And, um, the fact that like my adrenal gland is the overactive, um, organ in my body. So like I constantly have a bunch of adrenaline running. That's probably why I'm like an overachiever, right? Cause I feel good when that adrenaline's pumping. So like I read this book and you know, I, I I'm not going to say like, okay, I haven't, it's not that I've never read anything. I've read lots of different things and like, I just have never been a believer in any of these things. So like this book um, that I'm talking about, it's great and I like it, but what does it really do for my life? You know what I'm saying? Like knowing about yourself is kind of cool and it's interesting and sure you could find ways to plug it in, but I don't know. I just don't feel like anything's as comprehensive as transserving, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's definitely, there's, there, I, I don't think there's anything that comes close that I've read. You know, the Kabbalion was really good, but it's so old and esoteric and hard to understand that like, it doesn't really give you, it's not like a, a playbook like transurfing is, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, like teaches you like, okay, well, and the fact that you can see like, practical confirmation pretty pretty immediately you know pretty much immediately that's i mean that just to me makes it seem so much more accessible especially for somebody like me who you know didn't find the book until i was 35 years old like i was already you know a hundred years ago, like that was the end of life, you know, like you could, didn't live to be past 35. Right. So the fact that I could completely reprogram my mind and change my life at an age that was, you know, I mean, I'm practically considered elderly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there's only a handful. There's only a handful of books that even come anywhere close, like just only a few. And I've read, I've read a bunch of that stuff, like a bunch of it because I just got so negative for a while that I was like, well, I'm just going to have to brainwash myself somehow. And then, <laughs> and then really, to be honest, like trans was really the only one that, you know, other than just a couple others that were still not that practical that really even acknowledged the truth at all. You know, it's like you're saying oh, yeah. about that bubble of like, Oh, we'll just, you know, pretend like everything's great. Like, you know, have gratitude for stuff you don't even have yet. And like, it's just, it's just not, it's, yeah. it's not real. It doesn't. Yeah. You're like, what? Like the like, secret. What? I watched it when it came out, you know, the movie. And I was like, this is. So that's actually a very good um, bridge. Then you bringing up the secret for us to talk about our next topic, which is going to be the wave of fortune or the wave of success or the bluebird of happiness. There's lots of different terms for it. So um, I'll tell you a quick story and then we can get on to the actual, um, you know, the actual topic here, the wave of fortune. So when I was young, um, let's say I was about 18 or 19 years old, I'm not going to say what and nobody will ever pry this information out of me, but I was in a business that dealt with a lot of cash. And um, it was one of these businesses where it was either feast or famine. You never knew if you were going to strike it rich and have a bunch of money come. And no, I wasn't a gambler. Um, or, you know, it was going to be a bust and I was going to go home with nothing. So um, I read The Secret right when it came out. I was like right about yeah, 18, 19 years old. And um, this was sort of my first experience with... Um, any sort of manifestation practice or, 
you know, thinking along the lines of, you know, what later, you know, what became to me the wave of fortune, right? It was just my initial um, step in that direction. Later on, when I found Transurfing, I realized um, what it was I had been doing, and that was just a small part of a much bigger picture, which was, you know, the whole concept of the wave of fortune. So, so uh, I'm 18 or 19 years old, and I'm in this business where it's either hit or miss. And um, I read The Secret, and I would do this thing. And the people that worked with me thought that I was fucking insane when I would do this. So I would, I would come in, and I would go stand in a corner by myself, and I would stand facing the corner kind of like in um the Blair Witch Project (laughs) I'm sorry no that's funny (laughs) and I would look at my hand okay I would look at my hand for like a solid two or three minutes and I would just stare at my hand and I would actually and I know this sounds crazy and it telling this story later on, it kind of is crazy because I knew nothing of this world of, you know, any of the concepts that trans surfing's talk about, but I managed to sort of tap into one a little bit. So I would stand there looking at my hand and I would imagine my hand filled with cash. And the nights that I did this, I would make money. The times that I didn't do that, I would not make money. I mean, it was it. But of course, as Transurfing teaches us, you know, with um, what's the uh, what, what's the chapter signs? OK, signs is a good one that. The reason that signs work for you or superstitions work it's not because they actually work, right? If a black cat crosses in front of your path. You aren't, it's only if you believe that that will bring you bad luck, that it will bring you bad luck, right? Because then you are resonating on that frequency. So if you get spooked by a black hat and you say, oh, that's it, a bad luck, then all your thoughts thereafter are going to correspond with having bad luck. And remember, your thoughts are coming back to you like a boomerang, right? So you get exactly what it is you buy into. So me obviously staring at my hand was not actually making me money. It was the belief that my hand was going to be filled with money by the time I went home, right? So the other thing that I did was that first money that I made, I would acknowledge that that was it that it was going to be a cascade after that, that that was the beginning of the beginning of the wave. You know, I didn't think of it like a wave at the time, Um, but it worked. And and I had my little routine and it worked for me and it worked beautifully when I would actually buy into it. So this is a small part of the concept, the wave of fortune. Um, There are other components to it, like the chapters that we already went through. So um, there's a reason I tell people that Vadim laid this knowledge out in the uh, in in the way that he did in the in the you know how, how it flows. So the space of variations. First, you got to understand what you're dealing with. You got to understand what is accessible to you and sort of that you you have the ability to access it secondly you have to understand pendulums right because pendulums will affect the frequency of your thoughts right then you have to learn how to defeat pendulums right or how to at least manage them if you can do those three things you're prepped then for the wave of fortune or the wave of success. So so if you understand the space of variations as Vadim lays it out, you understand what pendulums are and how they affect you, and you know how to manage the pendulums in your reality, and if you can do that in the way that Vadim speaks of, then you have the opportunity for 
the wave of success. Now, what I was doing when I was young, I was foregoing those first three steps. I was just going for the, um, you know, the, the, the part that he, that Vadim speaks about that uh, you got to acknowledge your first win right? You always got to acknowledge your first win. Then if you acknowledge your first win, uh, then you start resonating on that frequency, right? You, you transport yourself to attract then via your thoughts. You're highlighting that sector of reality that you're a winner or that you're going to make money or that you're going to get opportunities or whatever it is that you're looking to get. When you experience that first windfall, then then you can highlight that sector of reality. Am I making sense? Yep, that makes sense. So that's what I was doing when I was young. I was just highlighting that sector of reality, right? I'm going to I'm going to win today, right? I'm going to win tonight. I'm going to I'm going to go home with a bunch of money, right? And then as soon as I would so like I do it now. Um I am first of all, I'm always looking for uh, that first, that first, that first thing to happen always. Um, and it can be something so little now. It's amazing. I've got this concept dialed in to where I can find a penny on the ground and acknowledge it. Oh, there it goes, you know, and it goes, it goes. Cause I have trained, I have trained my mind to highlight that sector of reality and to always acknowledge that first win. So that's kind of like, you know, the, the ideal spot to arrive in, right. Where you can start seeing results, um, pretty quickly, you know, we're only talking four chapters into the book, you know, so it's, 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 it's feasible, that you learn this stuff, you're at the you're at the, the the tail end of the first quarter of the book, you know, and you're already in a position where if you can master the first three concepts, or at least even have a firm understanding of it, right? You don't even have to master it. You could be doing you could be doing it only at like fifty percent and still see the effects. I feel. I mean, don't you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of times people accidentally fall into the wave of fortune, but it is, it is, it is, it does come about by acknowledging that first thing because that's how you can start to gain momentum. Absolutely. Momentum is an excellent word to use for sure. It's, uh, you know, if you look at uh, when I explain to people, you know, the wave of success, I say, imagine a wave in your mind, right? There's, there's that beginning where it's actually kind of flat and it, and it, and it just starts to move upward a little bit. And then, and then you, and then you climb up, you know, to the top of the wave or the crest, right? That's at the height of you, um, you know, experiencing this phenomenon in your life. And then after that, the wave sort of crashes. Now it doesn't crash in a way where like, you crash and burn or anything like that. There's just a natural organic movement to this wave. And once you start to play with it a little bit and understand how it moves, um, it's, it's, it's almost like a relief when the wave ends for me now, because I just kind of go back to, uh, sort of my baseline reality, right? And then, and then I know that I'm just going to ride that baseline for a while until I catch the wave of, again. So, it, and and in the last, I would say, you know, I've been studying and following transurfing and talking about transurfing for the last five years, but it hasn't really been until the last, I would say, two and a half years that. I really have got this concept dialed in. Um, and, and, and like I, like I said before, you know, I had tools before I had some vague understanding about it in my mind. I mean, I've always been an incredibly, incredibly fortunate person. Like I could tell you stuff that I have done or seen or had or bought or found or whatever that would just like blow your mind. Like people have said to me so many times in my life, 
God, how'd you do that? How'd you get that? How'd you win that? How'd you, you know, when I go to Vegas, I always win. It's amazing. I mean, I think I've lost, like, I can be a gambler at times. I love to go to casinos. I love to go to Indian casinos here in the U.S. I love to go to Vegas. Um, I think I've lost maybe like two times my whole life. I always come out on top when I go and gamble. And it's just, it's all about the mindset, you know? It's like, you can influence your reality in this way. You can, you could, you can, you can turn your 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 theoretical reality into a slot machine that spits stuff out to you if you know how to do it the right way you know you just you just have to develop a you just have to develop a sense for how it works and you have to follow the concepts you know right on i don't so, have i don't have that same <laughs> i'm interested about this because <laughs> i do not have the same luck like every time i've ever gone to and, and i know it is mental too because i'm like well i don't know how this game works i'm probably just going to get taken for a ride here i know that the casino has the odds and you know when i walk up my friends are playing craps on a cruise ship or whatever and they're having the time of their life and my buddy's jumping up and down and stuff and i'm like that's awesome. I just want, I kind of want to watch because you know, it's fun, whatever. But like anytime I get involved, I'm just like, damn, you know, I just start losing because, well, let me, let me tell you this. Craps is the worst game to play to casino. There's just too many choices to make. There's so, there's so many things there that you have to decide on. It's way too much. It's like when you go to gamble, all you should be doing is making one single decision because really it's just riding on um, your reality responding to your idea that you're going to win. I just play Baccarat now. That's all I play okay. because it's either, it's either yes or no, right? You have one decision to make. Either you're going to be the winner or the dealer is going to be the winner. And that's it. That's the only decision that you have to make. And you can either bet for yourself, I'm going to win, or you can bet that the dealer is going to win. That's the only decision you have to make. And it's almost 50-50 odds. It's like the best odds in the house. And all you have to do is say me, <laughs> right? right? And you either and you either win or lose. But yeah, I mean, if you go up to a crap, craps table, Owen, and you're like, oh, I'm going to get taken for a ride, right? Right. Or I, I always lose at these things, right? Your thoughts are coming back to you like a boomerang. Oh, totally. I, I'm aware of that. That's why I usually just watch and like hang out with them, you know, because I just, I don't even understand. I've just never been a gambler. Like it's just not something that I've ever really done. I learned how to play blackjack and, and like poker. But I mean, other than that, I don't really know. I don't really even know those games that well, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you, if you, if you ever feel like, if you ever feel like, you know, living it up and you want to go to the casino and gamble, um, I will go with you. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and we will win. <laughs> awesome. That sounds that sounds like so much fun. I'm in. <laughs> we should have a Transurfers uh casino run. Oh, that's sounds <laughs> where we awesome. just storm a casino and see what we can <laughs> And we get in a bunch of trouble. It's like the Kevin Spacey movie or whatever, you know? Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Somebody gets caught counting cards and <laughs> I start freaking out like Rain Man. I'm right. screaming in the middle of the <laughs> casino. <laughs> We gotta get these people out of here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who are these people again? So, so yeah, I mean, really the wave of success is just an accumulation of, you know, favorable tracks in the space of variations and, fa and, 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 and positive thoughts, you know? Um, I tell people a lot, don't let negative information into your layer of reality. You know, um, this is when you let negative information into your reality, you are pushing the pause button on the wave of success arriving. You will not, you will not benefit from letting negative information in your reality that's just the bottom line and 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 you have to decide that's your personal call you have to decide what is negative i know what is negative in my life i know that i know i know that when i when i log on to cnn there is no way in hell that the wave of fortune is going to show up at that point because my thought 
frequency, my, my, my resonating frequency, my energy is just, it, it goes to a base place and, uh, I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna benefit from it. Now, that's not saying that I don't do it. I just understand, right. you know, I just understand what I'm doing. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm telling the wave of fortune to, 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 to come back another time. That's fine. You know, when I took this real estate, um, when I took this real estate gig, I knew, you know, I knew as soon as I jumped in that it was going to, it was going to blow up. Uh, and everybody was like, oh, Renee, you know, don't, cause I was like gearing up, you know, I was really gearing up. I threw a lot of money into my, my, um, my marketing campaign. Um, I bought new clothes to show up to my new office, you know, and, um, you know, I was kind of spending a lot of money getting all this stuff ready and, and, and people in my life were like, oh, maybe you should take it easy. And maybe, maybe you should, um, you know, make a little money first. And I was like, no, shut up. I'm doing this. Right. No, <laughs> like, no, like, totally. Like, let me, yeah. Like, like what you're telling me to do is you're telling me to tell my reality for the money to wait for the for the 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 wave of fortune to wait you know um i'm going to jump in and do and i and and i have to say that tufty is a huge part of this as well you know when i follow um the 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 concepts in the tufty book it's like it heightens my it heightens my chances of getting getting the wave of success coming in and it stays in longer you know because I understand that um I understand that action to keep it going that momentum you know and and that's the valuable that's the valuable part here is like when you feel like you've experienced that first uh you know that that first thing you're like okay the wave the wave of success is here um then it's time for you to go into like you know um What's that move on that video game Street Fighter when you would press all the buttons at the same time and you do some crazy like It's like the fatality move or whatever in, in Mortal yeah, Kombat. Yeah, exactly. Like you would you would you would you would access this move and like maybe you'd get lucky if you could do it one time when you were playing where everything <laughs> would you just like do some major kick. Well, that that was that's what I do when I feel this coming on right? That this sensation when I find the penny on the ground. And then the next thing is, oh, I make a sale and I make a couple thousand bucks. And then, um, oh, the next thing is, is somebody contacted me and has some good news for me. And then, you know, and so when it starts going like that, I power punch my reality. I put in as much attention and energy as I can into my endeavors. And I, you know, I don't expect that I can go on like that forever. But I try my hardest to just keep a steady stream of energy going in. And it's like that, that, that slot machine, you know, idea. If I can keep pumping it full of energy, the slot machine keeps shooting, shooting favorable things, you know, good news and jobs and success and sure. more good luck and more positive life experiences and other positive people and projects and whatever it is, you know, but I got to keep, I got to keep on that track, you know, right. and I know that I know, and this will be our next discussion is the induced transition. Uh, or are we going to go with the flow of variations? But anyway, the induced transition is the thing that, um, you know, can, can end a ride on the wave of success prematurely. That's really good. Yeah. So like the reason why I don't gamble is because <laughs> mentally, like I just don't have the the, the belief muscles, I guess there, but like there are other things where like, even when I just first started, like the first time I did comedy, like, I, like I was at, like when I had a drink with my cousin afterward and like the bartender was like, good luck in your career and all this, I was like what? Uh, and it's just like, so there's certain things that I can tune into where I'm like, you know what? I can do this. Right. And then also, you know, there is that little bit of hide and seek too. You have to like watch out because, uh, things can seem like, you know, like, I don't know. It's like you have the option to give up, right? Mentally, but you have to like yeah. continue to be very determined in whatever it is. But there are certain things that I've done, like, you know, working in music and, you know, just different things like that where I was like, okay, 
I know I can be successful at this for whatever reason. I don't know why I know it, but like those are the yeah. things that I've chosen. And like for gam- so for gambling, for whatever reason, I just haven't been able to cultivate that belief where I'm like, oh, I'm just lucky. Like I'm just a gambler. I'm just like going to make a bunch of money at the at the table. But there are other things where if I put my hand to it, I'm like, all right, yeah. well, I'm, I'm comfortable with this. Like I can allow myself to be successful here, you know? <laughs> Well, absolutely. And here's the thing. If you decided to, I'm not suggesting this, but if you decided you wanted to become a winning gambler, you could. There's nothing, there's nothing stopping you, right, from the guy that's at the high rollers table in Vegas. You know, you guys are the same, you know, energetically, right? You're made of the same stuff. The guy at the, the guy at the high gambler, the high limit table in, in Vegas he just believes that he's a high roller and he wins and he does, right? If you wanted to do that, if that was your goal, now again, I'm not, you know, please, I hope no one out there is suggesting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are professional gamblers in the world, but yeah. I'm begging you, do not go. <laughs> do not go if- and put it all on black tonight. <laughs> oh Don't God. do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. But you know what I'm saying? Like the only reason that I have what I have and I've 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 won what I've won and I've made what I've made is because I put myself on that track where I believed that to be a possibility and my actions and my thoughts were coordinated with the things that needed to take place on that track for me to achieve mm-hmm. the things that I did. You know, yep. that's all. That's all. And and once you gain a sense of that and you practice it, right? Like right now, I have three different things that I do to 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 make my living financially. Um I have done this intentionally because all three of those things are not going to hit at the same time. You know, maybe I only get one. Maybe if I'm on a wave of success, I get two, right? Um, But the idea is that I drop importance and I don't create any excess potential that one of them, or or, sorry, all of them need to thrive. All all I need is one, right? All I need is one. And that's where our conversation about the flow of variations is really going to come into play here. Um, All I need is one. Right. And and me going with the flow of variations shows me exactly which one is going to uh, be the winner for that week or month or day or whatever it is. Sure. So 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 I'm not doing anything. I mean, yeah, I had to I had to create this foundation. Right. I have put a lot of energy into transserving. I have put a lot of energy into my my other business that I've had for 15 years. I've put a lot of energy into the real estate thing. I've put a lot of energy into my other businesses that are still, you know, they're still there. I don't run them as much as is, you know, they're they're kind of like sleeping. Right. I don't shut them. Right. I just don't give them any energy because I'm putting my energy into the other three things, right? Or whatever's calling for me at that time, if it's two, if it's one, whatever. Um, But learning how, uh, I'll say this, firm understanding of this concept, the wave of fortune or the wave of success, whatever version of the book you've read or what you've been listening to, um, and the flow of variations are intertwined. You know, um, when I try to control something about my reality and I want to see one specific thing succeed, I'm almost guaranteed to have none of my endeavors give me anything. So I've learned the hard way, you know, let your reality show you where your wealth is to come from. And I don't mean wealth just in a financial sense, you know, whatever it is, rich life experiences, good people, um, you know, good, fun projects, whatever it is, your reality will show you this stuff, right? If you let it, if you can figure out a way to quiet your mind, right? And then do the other things, do the other steps before this, this, this concept comes into play, like understand and have a good um, relationship with the space of variations. 
step one. Step two, take a take a inventory of the pendulums that are in your life and decide which ones are good and which ones need to go. Three, go, actively go about defeating those pendulums or managing those pendulums in a way that sets you up for the wave of fortune. And then then you're then you're in a position to really start transurfing after that. Once you've accessed these these four concepts and you've you've gotten them or your brain has said okay i agree right and you and you're you're doing these four things um after that you can really 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 start playing around with your reality but you have to build you have to build your foundation first and that this this is obviously where I'd start these four concepts. So if you haven't listened to the Wave of Fortune, uh, or I'm sorry, if you haven't listened to the chapters before the Wave of Fortune, I would definitely recommend doing that for sure. So, uh, do you mind going through those four one more time? The the concepts, yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah. So so first is that you that you understand and you have a good a good relationship with the space of variations, meaning that you've done what you've needed to do to connect with it, right? You did that, that, um, what did I label it as in the beginning, um, build a visual representation of it in your mind, right? So it's a tree with low hanging fruit, right? And you can pick off what fruit you like and the fruit that you, you, you choose to pick are, tracks with things that you want on the tracks right or you know you're in a spaceship and you're flying around the space of variations and the track that you want to access is a distant planet and you got to fly your you know your spaceship over there and land and then you have to do the things on that track that will fulfill the order of what it is that you're asking for right so firm relationship with the space of variations second understand take an inventory of the pendulums that are in your reality if you didn't listen to this chapter i would definitely recommend doing that you need to figure out what the energy exchange is for each of the pendulums in your life if it is not equal right you're giving as much as you're getting or you or you're getting more so if you're not getting more than what you're giving or it's not equal right then it's time to renegotiate the deal with the pendulum or you have to eradicate it out of your life okay so then comes in defeating pendulums right so then you have to figure out how you're going to deal with them right a lot of dealing with pendulums Two simple words, drop importance, right? Importance is, dropping importance is a key, is like a magical key for dealing with pendulums. Pendulums hook you via importance. And the more importance that you give the pendulum, the, um, the, that you assign to the pendulum, then the, the, you know, the, the, the more you're going to have it in your life and it's going to continue to drain you. So you need to, um, you know, really, really firmly understand the value of learning how to drop importance. So defeating pendulums, excellent chapter in figuring out how to actually manage some of the things that are, you know, stuck on you in your reality. The other thing is, and then, and then if you follow all that, uh, you know, you can get yourself to this place, the wave of fortune where, um, you know, you can actually start to benefit from your thoughts, you know, and I, it's, it's, I don't need to overcomplicate it. It's pretty easy. Like there are gifts waiting for you if you can if you can learn to control your thinking. So the destructive pendulums of our reality this is the, is the bottom line. The destructive pendulums of our realities are taking us away from the wave of fortune. That's it. It's it doesn't get any more simple than that, right? I mean Transurfing is an amazing, amazing set of tools um, because you can you can go into this 
stuff super, super, super deep, right? You can take it all the way to the end. Um, what are some of the like very end chapters that are just, you know, it gets really, really specific and it's, you know, really fine tuning your reality. But here's the thing. If you don't have a lot of time, you are in a hurry to start seeing results, focus on these four. Space of variations, pendulums, defeating pendulums, wave of, wave of fortune. Yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of, that's kind of it, you know? Yeah, can you talk about like, um, so you say, you know, when the wave of fortune starts, then you acknowledge your first win and that's the beginning of, of that momentum. Can you talk about like, um, what happens kind of after that with the wave of fortune and how, you know, you said, you said like, sometimes you expect that it, it's not going to last forever. You know how to ride that out. Can you talk a little bit about yeah. that? Yeah. So, you know, once you've experienced this, um, you know, once you've, it, it, it's kind of like a, um, you know, the, 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 the concept of, you know, your thoughts ret return to like a boomerang, right? Um, it's really about, it's like practicing something, right? I'm sure, you know, we've all, we've all practiced something either like a yo-yo when we're a kid or playing some game or what was that? game in elementary school tetherball remember like the kids that were super good at tetherball you remember tetherball yeah, tether okay so so dealing with the wave is kind of like mastering a game right you are literally turning the information in your reality that you experience daily into a game you are trying to focus on all the positive stuff. Now, I'm not talking about what we were laughing about in the beginning, you know, of like, oh, be grateful for all the, you know, abundance and all that. You know, it's not, it's not like that, right? It's, it's about, it's very scientific, right? And this is getting back to the space of variations. Um, you're just highlighting that sector of reality right? You're just highlighting the sector of reality where you find stuff or win stuff or get stuff or make money or have people call you, you know, because they want to offer you a job or a this or a that or something, right? It's just, it's just learning how to stay focused, um, on what you what you intend to have and highlighting that sector of reality that'll bring it to you because if you highlight a different sector of reality like the sector that says um you know i'm not going to get anything right it is it is impossible to see the positive stuff that's there for you when you're not thinking like that it's all about, I mean, I, I have, uh, after studying this stuff as intensely as I have for the last five years, I have all these weird visuals in my mind that really help me throughout the day, you know, and one of the visuals are, is that I have a flashlight and I want to shine that flashlight on the sector of my reality to highlight it. That's going to have the stuff that I want. And if I can do that, you know, if I can do that and I don't start moving my flashlight over to, um, you know, some tragic event or or the homeless guy that's dying on the street or, you know, and then lower my frequency and then I can't then it, then I'm not l seeing positive things. Right. It's all about where your 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 attention goes. Sure. Right. Yeah. Your focal point. So. um a lot of the reason why we're so quick to focus on the negative is because the negative actually stirs a lot more emotion than the positive does, right? Good news doesn't stir the same emotion as bad news does, right? I mean, here's the thing, like, 
we could live our whole lives and at the end, you know, like I've heard a lot of people talk about um, bad stuff that's happened to them, right? Like, oh man, you know, I was, I was, uh, you know, I was abused as a kid and then I, you know, I messed up and I went to, you know, I had to go to a boarding school or I had to this and then I struggled finding um finding employment and you know I've heard lots and lots and lots of stories right from people contacting me over the last five years with their stories and none of them ever go like this I was born into an upper middle class family that provided me with all the things that I needed and I got a good college education and then I got this cool job and then this cool thing happened to me you know you know what i'm saying like i know exactly what you mean like no nobody nobody ever pitches it to me about the positive stuff that's happened to them right oh and then one time i found a hundred dollar bill on the ground oh and then one time i you know I, i went to vegas and i won five grand or you know nobody ever highlights the positive um the positive things that have happened to them and they nobody tells their story through positivity Most people tell their story through, you know, um, I don't want to say negativity because not everybody does, but it's always got that little bit of a tilt on it. Yeah, it's like, like, I'm telling you my struggle. I'm telling you my struggle. Exactly. So, So your internal dialogue should not be telling yourself your struggle, right? And that is where... You know, I've had a lot of people, and this is way before transurfing, uh, because I achieved some pretty cool shit before I even found transurfing. And a lot of people would say to me, because I was born and raised, you know, poor white trash, right? I grew up in a mobile home park on the outskirts of a Central Valley town. And, you know, nobody ever went after any of their dreams in my family. There is no reason I should be where I am today. And a lot of people have asked me, you know, how did you, how did you do that? You know, no education, nothing that would, that would, there's nothing in my life that somebody would go, okay, well, that makes sense how she did that then. Nothing about what I've done makes any sense. And the reason that I've been able to do that is because I have consistently, one, allowed myself to have. That's the biggest thing. But two, the story that I've told myself is that I'm a winner. You know, I'm a winner. My boyfriend and I actually had a conversation this morning in um, in the kitchen, and he was telling me how this company that he works for, worked for, he's actually quitting his job after 20 years. He's <laughs> leaving on Friday wow. to start his own business after reading Transurfing, awesome. okay? Yep, we've been together for a year and a half. Um, he's worked for the same company for 20 years. Finally, about four months ago, he picked up Transurfing steps one through five, And Friday is his last day after 20 years. That's awesome. Can you imagine? And he's starting his own business. He's doing his own thing. That's so cool. So, yeah, amazing. I mean, I'm actually seeing this stuff work with people close to me, and it's really awesome. So, um, you know, one of the things he's telling me is that people in his business, in this big company that he works for, when they get hired on, they get a color um, label attached to them, either like green, blue, red, or gold, right? And gold means that you're just kind of a normal person. Your trajectory as a person looks normal, right? Green is that you've got some, you've got some more skills than the slightly, you know, the guy with the gold, right? But like blue or red is that you're a superstar, Right. So what get guess what happens? The, the the people that get the blue or red color attached to their name, they one, think differently about themselves, right? And two, the people that see that color treat them differently. Sure. Oh, well, that's a rising star, right? It's actually a pretty fucked up game if you stop and think oh, about yeah. it. For them to play that on people in the corporate ro- world, it's pretty fucked up. Oh, it's up. very brave new Especially- world. Like that's it's oh, alpha, ab- beta, ab- you know, whatever. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so I said to him, I said, gosh, imagine this. Imagine you take two people. (laughs) Sorry about that. Hang on one second. Hang on one second. Sorry about that. No, that's fine. Okay, so imagine you take two people with the same skill set, right? Same age, same everything, right? Like as closely, you know, as as close as you could get to being on the same path, right? And you put them in this in this company and you and you label one of them a blue and one of them a gold. Right? What do you think's going to happen? I think I know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So 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 you got to label yourself the go- mm-hmm. the blue. Okay. Right? Do you know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. No, that's you, really good. Label yourself. Don't yeah. let somebody else decide who you are. Absolutely, because your thoughts come back to you like a boomerang. So if you if you allow someone to label you, right, and you believe that label, you're going to throw that boomerang out, and sure enough, that prediction is going to come mm-hmm. true. You will confirm. You know, it. yeah, absolutely. So so this is this is the the bottom 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 line of the wave of fortune, right? Label yourself a winner. Label yourself somebody that's going to achieve what it is you intend to achieve. Do not let anyone label you otherwise and absolutely do not label yourself otherwise. You will, there's, it's, 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 how will you possibly succeed? And I know this sounds so, um, this sounds so simple, but like, I actually see people, people come to me that are really, really messed up in, in their thinking, you know? Yeah. And, and I'm like, man, come on now, you know? Yeah, give yourself some credit, you know? Like, you're just as good as everybody else. I think, like, it's a lot of people that just just get beat up by life and they, they just don't think they're, they're worth anything, you know? I think that's, uh, that's part of it, you know, that mentality. Yeah. And then once you buy into that, I mean, it's just, that's not what you want to yes. do. So. You know, what we want to do is acknowledge our first win and highlight the sectors of reality that are positive instead of dragging around our uh, struggle so that everybody knows how hard we've had it. I don't know. I don't understand why we want to flaunt that as human beings. I, I actually, you know what? I think I do. I think it, be, I think it comes from just like, from like, old, like as we're developing as human beings, you know, we have this like, he says in the book too later that we're like, we used to yes. be the, the, the lizards and the, you know, reptiles and the dinosaurs or whatever. And it's like, well, we're coming from this place that's like fear, like the, the primal instinct yes. is fear. And that's where, that's oh, where yeah. we start. Um, Absolutely. We did not, we did not um, thrive as a species by walking around focusing on the positive. Right. We, we, we didn't. didn't. We would have died. We would have died very, very quickly, right? Because a T-Rex would have came and like chomp our head off while we were looking at how beautiful a flower was and thinking about, you know, all the beauty in the world. We, we had to... Were humans even alive during dinosaurs? I don't, or did I I don't think so, but <laughs> <laughs> who knows? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, no, totally. You know, yeah. lions, yeah, we lion, were, we, whatever, you know, tiger. Yeah, exactly. We had to focus on the negative to survive as a species, right? But times have changed now, right? T-Rex or lion or whoever is not coming knocking at your door, right? Of your house. Like, you don't have to, you don't have to worry about that stuff like our, you know, prehistoric cave ancestors did <laughs> right this is not a history you know? lesson <laughs> yeah please <laughs> remember everybody i'm un- uneducated i didn't i didn't i didn't go to school so i'm trying my best <laughs> i mean it works the metaphors it works you know um yeah yeah no you have exactly a choice right. you have a choice now you have a choice right now. we can actually we can focus on the positive and it is actually beneficial now that we've come to this place in human development so that's why we Absolutely. can hop on this uh, wave of fortune and the way we want to do that 
is we want to understand what the space of variations is, that everything that we want already exists for us. We just need to be able to highlight that specific sector with our thought energy. Uh, take inventory of the pendulums that are in our lives, which ones are giving us more than they're taking away, uh, or at least are neutral, um, and then defeat the ones that are uh, are taking our energy and then start to benefit from our thoughts, knowing that it's a boomerang. So once we acknowledge that first win, then we can continue to, to, uh, to focus on, on that. And that's what carries us through and puts us on the wave of fortune. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I've actually developed a tool and I will leave, I will leave everybody with this. Um, if you want to go onto my Instagram account, I think you have to scroll back maybe, I don't know, 10 or 15 posts and you'll see them. Um, I, I, I created this concept called reprogramming stickers. And have you seen them? Owen? I don't think I have. I've somehow missed that. Okay, they're pretty cool. So I have I have a few different versions on my Instagram page. Um, if you click on it, you could just take a screenshot and then cut and paste it, and then you could take them to like um, you know FedEx Kinkos or a print shop or something and have them print them out as stickers. Okay. So what I do is I tell everyone to print these out and to post them around their homes in obvious homes, office, car, school, wherever obvious places. So like I have one on my fridge. I have one on the back of my cell phone. I have one next to my pad on my laptop. I have one on the dash of my car. I have one on my vanity mirror in my bathroom. I have one in my office next to my desk. So what, what, what they do is this, they, you, you acknowledge them. And for the first, um, let's say for the first week, when you come in front of one, actually read the saying off either out loud or in your mind, right? After a week, you don't have to do it anymore. It's all subconscious after that point. So what the reprogramming sticker says is this. Now you can make your own or you can go off just my generic one. I like my generic one. And there's lots and lots and lots of people around the world that have these posted up in their homes. And I've heard some pretty incredible stories from them. So what the reprogramming sticker says is this, my world is taking care of me. Everything is going according to plan. Things are playing out beautifully and will continue to do so with ease. Okay, so you start believing that, right? You start resonating on that frequency and you take that into your reality. That is going to return to you like a boomerang. So you have to remember, you are responsible for what's coming back to you right and we'll talk about this at a later time the mirror effect but it's it's kind of you know it's kind of the same thing um what you're throwing out into reality is going to return to you back like a boomerang so if you if you can if you can participate with these reprogramming stickers you can start throwing out a new boomerang and hopefully you know uh, be effective enough with it that you can see some changes in your reality. I know that I still have them up in my house. I mean, I've been doing it for, um, about four years now. So yeah. Awesome. That's great. Yeah, that's great. And so you can follow, uh, Renee on Instagram at reality underscore transurfing. And, uh, yeah, that'll do it for this one. <laughs> So we'll, uh, we'll see you on the next trans and chill, star seeds. You know, find that twin flame, cuddle up tight, and namaste in and order some vegan takeout. I don't know. Whatever you do, do what you do. Be yourselves. Hit that downward facing dog. You know. Hey, follow Renee on Instagram at reality underscore transurfing. Help me produce this podcast uh, by going to patreon.com slash Bootsy Greenwood. Hit me up with some loving, and we'll see you guys on the next time. <laughs> <laughs>